Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yabra, you may be seated. What a great blessing and privilege it is, Yisraya, that God grants unto us the opportunity that we may come into his beat, his house, whereby his ruach chachodash is the power of our direction and it directs us in all the counsel of all Maria. So what a great blessing and a privilege it is, Yisraya, that God grants us this opportunity on this yam Ravi and this Chadve Imat, we may come and hear the voice of his cry unto his people as we are in the wilderness, in the Bimitzbah, uh, desiring his, uh, his promises to be fulfilled, the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. This is a world that has no idea as to whom the Most High is. He's based upon the pseudo principle that they each individual has developed. It is far from the principles of Omariya. It has nothing to do with what his image is, his personality, his person, his character is. It's far from that because this is a generation that really doesn't know Yah. It really doesn't. It has no wisdom. It has not the knowledge of Yah. It has no understanding at all. And everyone in their own facetious, wicked ways, they literally think they know. And I must say, they really don't know a damn thing. I say it that way. It is what damns them. Because there is no dedication unto Yah. There is no devotion. There is no sincerity. There is no purity of heart. They truly are not inspired. And that's what I want to teach on tonight about the inspiration of Yah. They're not inspired by the wisdom of Almighty Yah. But before I do that, I want to speak on just a specific for a moment. I was talking to this precious elder yesterday at prayer time, and he's 73 years old, and he says to me, you know, Reach Dawit, uh, uh, especially on the eastern coast, whereby those that know of you, they really don't know me because they've never met me. They've simply gone to our website. Uh, someone has told them about us or and they have gone to listen and to hear and some of the preaching and he says to me and he spoke quite frankly and with honesty he says you know Reak, uh, i'm speaking forthright with you with honesty that a lot of the ministers and preachers think that you are he used this word exactly you are too rigid and you're too harsh. You have really no consideration of the people. Well, I was not offended at that, nor was I betaken by his expression. And then he goes on to say, but I love you the way you are. Don't stop preaching the way you preach. Now, I want to show you why they think I'm rigid and why they think I'm hard. I will show you. But I want to read something before I show you that. All right. When people say things to me, always consult the mind of Yah. We tend to consult our own minds, don't we, and our emotions. I consult the, the mind of Yah. We will see what he says about this Marats. That is what a rigid man or a harsh man. He is ma Marats. Marats. He is harsh. He is rigid he is forceful and his words are forceful and his words are rigid there is no escaping as to what he say and so this is the mindset of this generation because there is one thing in their bosom that they don't realize why they think that way i want to read this account quickly but i want to speak on the inspiration of yah tonight i want to read from the book of lucas marcus lucas luke lucas the 19th chapter if you ask someone concerning this parable, Marcus, Lucas, or Lucas, Luke, the 19th chapter, I believe in verse 30, 13. I want to read that quickly, all right. Now, if I ask those that would criticize me and ostracize, I'm not here to defend me, all right? That's not what this occasion is about. I just want to share something with us to show you why you would think I'm rigid and forceful and I am crude in my speech and I am crude 
in my speech. But this is the parable that Joshua spoke unto his disciplined ones. In verse 13, and he called his ten evet, or his servants, and he delivered unto them, verse 12, let me read that. He said, therefore a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a melchut, a kingdom, uh, and to return. He went away to establish, or as Yoshua says, I go and prepare your place. He is this noble man. And he called his ten servants and delivered unto them ten pounds uh, and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Now, if I ask these men that think I'm harsh, who are the ten servants? They could not tell me. And if I ask us, because um, we think that we know, but yet we do not, uh, we do not, uh, uh, we do not study the Torah, we will not know. I will tell you who the ten servants are. He's talking to the ten tribes of Yisra'ya, the ten northern tribes. That's who he is talking about. He has given them the gifts, the gift of Yeshua, Hamashiach. And he gives us the knowledge of Yeshua, then he is expecting an abundance of fruit peri when he comes, Yisra'ya. And his citizens, they hated him. Now they hated the noble man. He was kind. His efforts were very kind to them. He considered them, but they hated the noble man and sent a messenger after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. We will not have the instructions of Yeshua HaMashiach to reign, to have authority in our mind. We are superior in our own intellectual ability. And that's how this generation is. You cannot tell them a damn thing. I don't care who it is. They will not hear. They don't hear nobody. And so they say to Omar, I don't need a living Torah. I am a God unto myself. For my father Hashatan says, the day that I defy your Torah, I will become like an Elohim. I will become a God. I will have my own mystical power, is what we say today. We may not think, we do not deliver that kind of speech unto Yah, but that's the way we talk in our actions. It is almost like a parent instructing a child, Cannot they tell by their body language, the way they contort themselves, uh, that they are being dismissive uh, of their command? And that's the way we are. We're that way as well. We're very dismissive when it comes to Almighty Yah. They say, we don't want God's to rule of us. We don't want the Torah of Yah. We don't want the law. We don't want no messenger. We don't want you to send them a, no messenger to speak unto us. And it came to pass that when he, had, he, when he was returned, having received the Melchut, he, is, he has received the kingdom from the Abba. Yeshua has received the charge of the kingdom from Yah. Everything in the Chathe talks about Yisra'ya, his people. Every parable, every symbolism, every figurative speech, it is about us, Yisra'ya. We read this, we don't even know what we read, you understand? But yet we think we're knowledgeable. And we know and you don't know. That's why he gave gifts unto the assembly, that it may perfect his knowledge in us, Yisrael. Then he commanded these servants to be called unto him whom he had given the, the usury, the silver, the money, or the kesef. That is silver, that is money, it is kesef. He had given them the money, he said, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Yeah, your pound has gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, you are an excellent servant because you have been very faithful in just the simple and the little things. He said, uh, I will give you authority over ten cities. I'm going to give you authority over much. You're going to have authority over Yisra'ah. Where a man is faithful, Yisra'ah, they are the ten northern tribe. And Yahuwah, Benjamin, and Judah, that's the southern tribe. 
And it all has to do with, uh, with the Yisra'ya, Yahura is where the birth line of Hamashiach comes from. Uh, and you have this arrogance and this nature of a people that think because uh, there's a birth in us, is a birth and the birth of the life of Yahshua should be in us. Uh, and yet we operate in the nature of Yisra'ya and our sins, our rebellionists, uh, and our fleshly activities. We must be taught these things. We must understand Yisra'ya. That's just the truth. We must understand. Yeah. And the second came saying, Yeah, master, that pound has gained five pounds. And likewise, uh, he said unto him, I will make you uh, rulers over five cities. And it says, And another came saying, Master, my eye opened my knowledge, my mental concept of you, uh, commanded me not to utilize uh, the beauty of your truth to gain the proficiency to operate in the Ruach and not to denounce the power of your truth to walk in the Ruach because I'm led by you. So what I have done, I have taken that gift or the pound you have given me, uh, the kasef, and I have brought you your pound. I have kept it laid up in a napkin. I did not let the light of your Torah shine through me. I did not let your edoth, your testimony uh, shine in my bosom, the light of your truth. Uh, I hid it. And that is what uh, Yisra'ya is doing today. We have hidden the truth of Yah under the layer of the most corrupt, damaging thing about us. It is not someone else that damaged you. It is your own wicked nature and your own corruption and stubbornness that destroys you. You're not going to be able to blame anyone when you stand before Almighty Yah. I don't care what or how someone has done you. Uh, you will have no excuse at all, Yisraya, because he has given unto us uh, the necessaries uh, to overcome every circumstance and situation uh, that we are battling in. So he took it and he hid it, and he says, here is your pound, I brought it back. And another came saying, here is thy pound, verse 20, I have kept it laid up in a napkin. Why? He says, for I, I feared you. He said, I feared you. I feared you, Yah, not in reverence and regard as to who he was. He said, I feared you. He said, because I know that you are an austere. You are a maratz. You are a harsh man. You are a forcible man. You are a very rigid man. I know that. You don't understand how rigid Yah is. If we break one of his commandments, he said, we're guilty of them all. That's rigid. Yeah. Now that's tough. You break one, you're guilty of them all. He said, I knew ya that you were a rigid man. You were, you were an austere man. He said, you take up what thou layest not down, and you reap that thou did not sow. And he said unto him, this is what Yah says unto him. And he says unto him, he said, out of your own mouth, I will judge you. He called him a wicked servant. He said, you are a wicked, thou wicked servant. You knew that I was austere. See what the world is trying to paint unto us, uh, that Yah is not Moratz. It's trying to tell us that uh, what a messenger speaks like uh, in some kind of form that uh, people perceive it is harsh uh, and is forcible. Uh, they will say, that's not the love of Yah. They will say, that's not Yah. And y'all said, you knew that I was austere. Yeah. What did you expect? I'm not a weak one like your damn gods. Yeah. He is not that way. He is not some little passy you got to play over and trick. Yeah. He doesn't give a damn about your little emotions because of what you are going through. You're not going through a damn thing. And we want to play up our case uh, greater than anyone else's case in life. Uh, yeah. We all are born, we live, and we die. Yeah. And we think our circumstances are much more complex and greater, you damn fools we are. Yeah. He called him a wicked servant. He did not call him one righteous. He said, you're wicked. He said, thou wicked servant. 
You knew that I was harsh. You knew that I was moraz. You knew that I was forcible. I expect what I haven't even sown, I expect. We got this melancholy spirit that the world has uh, given unto us. And we think that uh, Yah is going to consider us uh, and my circumstances. That they are much more important. Uh, my heart conditions or the circumstances uh, that are causing me to have heartaches uh, are greater than anyone else's. That is such a wicked, selfish spirit. Uh, you don't even care about anyone if you have that kind of spirit. Uh, because there are people that are suffering greatly. Watching their babies starve and our sons and daughters are, are walking in spirits of harlotry and wickedness. Uh, they're greedy and they're fat. We think that uh, our circumstances uh, deserve a special attention of Yah, but it's not going uh, to be that way. Why? Because if we are the true Hiroshim, uh, then many are the afflictions. Then we are going to suffer. Because he needs to destroy that stubborn, wicked flesh uh, that is harsh. We don't think of ourselves uh, as being harsh. Uh, but when a messenger speaks, we think when he speaks, uh, we think that he is harsh. Uh, he is crude. He is not kind. He, he is not nice. Not according to your definitives of what nice is. Uh, I will never be that kind of niceness. I don't want to be that kind of niceness. Because you are not nice. And so these same men that ostracize me, uh, they're cowardly men. That's what they are. I, I want to show you why they think I'm harsh, all right? I'm going to show you exactly why. You must find the answer in the Torah. It has nothing to do with me. It's what the book says. I remember years ago, 20 years ago, there was two individuals. Neither one of them are here. Of course, I knew they were in cahoots. And I asked the question, I said, how many of you all think I'm harsh and mean and terrible? Well, the other ones, they sit there. And so these two individuals, they kind of eyed each other. Of course, you all can see, but I'm looking right at them. I can see the expressions. And so as one of their hands began, they got both of them, their hands went up. I said, okay. I said, I appreciate that. I'm glad you consider me to be that way. And I read this. I remember this. I said, what do you think of Yah? Do you think he's austere? I want to show you what this, what this cat face says, all right? He is not some passe. He is not a passe. You're not going to play him like you play your own emotions. You play your own little emotions, your feelings, and figure that someone should cater to your little emotions and your little feeling. Damn your emotions. What I know that I have precious achot that are suffering greatly and my ach. That are doing great things and their lives are much more complete than mine. You think I'm going to let a fat, greedy one in this country and individuals that, uh, that have no excellence of Yah's will and purpose in them when they're those that suffer greatly? You think I'm going to let some sister here in this nation, when I look at someone like Sister Hawkins down there, sleeping in the earth and floor, and one of the most beautiful women you want to meet, she has come here, it's not a damn pretense. It's real. And you can tell when someone is beautiful. It's not a falsehood. We're damn hypocrites. We're not honest with each other. I hate a dishonest individual. I hate a damn hypocrite. Tell me the truth, man. Be honest with me, man. Don't pretend. And when her... When she would say, you know that it was nothing of pretense. It was genuine. It was real. You knew that. You meet these damn false ones, think that someone is going to uh, obfuscate the responsibility. Yeah, because of their little emotional trend. Damn your emotional trend. I don't give a damn. I say that and I don't take it back. I don't give a damn who it is. I said to the elder, I said, you know, in all of what I call harsh speech, it doesn't promote the change in the lives of the people. I said, look at all the soft speech. And people, you take men like Frederick Price. At one time, there were about six, 7,000 people coming to that dirty whole house out there. The old man got old. He's dying. And so now there may be 1,500 people that are 10. They built this $50 million facility. You take that old crazy fool out there, uh, Crystal Cathedral. Uh, 
brought in between 60 to 100, 200 million dollars a year. Now he's gotten old. He stepped down and they always put their sons up. Big altercation between he and his son. Went from, went from nearly 10,000 people a week to 1,000 to the day. All of these dirty whole houses are crumbling that way. You understand? Because if you don't feed them what they want, then they will not stand with you. I don't care. I don't want a coward to stand with me. Give me some warriors and I will maintain the cause. Just don't forget the cause like Gideon did and the people go back to their wickedness. I won't do it as long as I'm alive. Verse 22, and he said unto him, out of your own mouth I will judge you, your wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, taken up, that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, wherefore then gave, why did you not give not to, uh, my money uh, into the bank of usury, that at my coming I may have uh, required my own with my usury? Why did you not just submit to one and just obey one that is spiritual and obey what they instruct you to do? Even though you do not have the complete knowledge of Torah, just obey that. And I would have received gain from your life if you had done that. You are stubborn Jezebel, you're hard-headed, you think you know every damn thing, and look at where you are. It shows you don't know a damn thing. You understand? We don't know nothing. Because we will not be in the spiritual condition and the shape that we are in. And we knew something, and we are that we had the experience. We will not be in the condition and the shape that we are in. That's what Yah is speaking unto Israel. That's what the ten people and the ten gifts represents Israel. And he said unto them that stood by, he said unto those, he's not going to have pity. He said, take from him that which he has. I gave it to take it from him. He said, give it to him that has ten. And they said unto him, master, he that have ten pounds, for I say unto you that unto everyone that which has shall be given. And from him that have not, even that which he has shall be taken away. You think you got something now. Yah says, I'm going to take that away. And the what, even though you may have a little centennial, or you may just have a small amount of substance that is, uh, that is worthy uh, of my, uh, my inspection, I will take that from you uh, and give it to the one that has abundance. And so when they think that they are literally, uh, when individuals that have been here, they think that they are leaving, they're taken. Uh, even the little they had, Yah has taken that and given it unto the messenger of Yah that he can even see clearer and better than he, what he did uh, in the beginning. He said, take it from him. He said, but those my enemies, those my enemies, verse 27, but those my enemies, which would not, which would not do that I should, but those my enemies, which would not, they don't want me that I would reign over them, bring here and slay them before me. He said, take this wicked beast and kill him, destroy him. And many are being destroyed. They're dying and they don't even know they're dead. They're spiritually dead. They have no life in them. They have no, uh, they have no effervescence uh, of the liveliness of Yah in them. Uh, they're dead. They're sinful. And they are wicked. That's the condition and the state of them. Well, you're still harsh. Well, I will be harsh. And I will be marats. Even you that have thought I was that way. That's all right. I will not alter it one bit at all for you. Because you forsake Yah, then you think you will not forsake me. You get upset with Yah, you think you're not going to get upset with me. I will not alter one centennial to appease you or to make myself acceptable unto you. So as I searched the Kadve, I began to read from the wise saying of Shadrach. I want you to hear this. Why you think and why those individuals think that someone like me is harsh, rigid, that is what the elder said. He is 73 years old. I was talking to him yesterday during prayer time. 
And we were talking about the end times, what shall be. And he just blurted out, you know, Reach, he said, I want to tell you something. There are many of those that think that you are just too rigid, too harsh. That you operate that way. Well, why would they think that? I want to read this from the book of Shirach. Shirach 6, verse 18. And as he speaks unto Yisra'ya, he encouraged them here that they allowed the wisdom of Yah to stir up their inward parts, the ru'ah, the liveliness in them. And he says, my son, Shirach 6, 18, my son, from your youth up, gather, from your youth up, Gather instruction with discipline. As you grow, garner instruction, the muzah. What is the muzah? The chastisement, the discipline of Omariya. We despise it as a nation of people. We don't want no one to chastise us. You, when you find a fool and you instruct them, uh, you show them where they have error, they will always justify their damn wicked ways. Uh, they will always say it's someone else, it's others. They will never see their damn stupidity. I don't even want to deal with a fool like that. You deal with a damn fool. You understand uh, you answer fool according to their father. You don't even waste your energy with a fool like that. Because you're going to get your blood. You're going to get impatient. They're going to make you angry. Just get away from them. So from our youth up, he said from your youth up, gather Musa instructions, discipline. Learn how to be chastened. Learn how to be corrected. Learn how to receive that kind of instruction. We don't know how to receive that. We don't want no one to instruct us. It shows our shallow nature. We're insecure. We have nothing that is worth anything because a wise individual will always hear the Messiah. But a fool, if you instruct a fool, if you correct a fool, they will hate you. You will get yourself a Black. And that is what a stupid fool will do. They think or they make mockery. They will laugh. I don't like that. Don't do that to me. There are things that I don't, I don't play around with two or three times. Because when I see something, I know that's the nature. It was one thing about a lion. You know a lion. He's not looking for blueberries. He's purely a carnivora. And he doesn't eat berries. He eats meat. So you don't play with a big cat like that. You don't play with that. He is not omnivora. He doesn't like berries and meat. He's not like a dog. He's a big cat. And he likes meat. You understand? So Shirach, in this intuitiveness of his wisdom, wise, a counsel of many, he says, from your youth up you have gathered what? When you gather something, don't you bring that in? You go out, I will go out on the Yam Shishi on Friday. I will gather the broccoli. Well, I've been watching the broccoli yesterday. We worked all day in the garden. Yosef and I, I had Zachim uh, Ahalaya and Zachin Chawit. We planted nearly 2,000 sweet potato slips. It was hot. And the work was rigid, it was tough, and yet as I did all that before I did all that, I went and surveyed the entire garden. And I knew exactly, I know what we have, and I know what Friday will produce. So when I go gather, I will go reap the abundance of what's in the garden. Isn't that so? So from our youth up, we can tell if we've been trained in any kind of beauty or discipline. From our youth up, we have gathered the Musa. So when there are circumstances in our lives that arise, uh, then we have the ability with the wisdom of Yah to deal with that uh, because it's the power of that wisdom, the chukmah of Yah that encourage us and strengthen us. Uh, but when you're dealing with a fool uh, and a nicompoon, they have not gathered uh, any kind of instructions uh, in their youth. Uh, so we will gather the broccoli. We will put it up. And then we will eat broccoli. 
We will have it more than once. We will consume it until it's all gone. You understand? It is one thing about the wisdom of Yah. You can never, it, you can never consume it all. Because the more you utilize it, the more you grow. The more you allow the mind of your shoe to operate in you, the wiser you become. And the stronger you become. So this wise man speaks unto us uh, to gather up instructions uh, with discipline. You have to be disciplined uh, to gather. You can't go to the garden when it's 100 degrees and not be disciplined and work. I say to Yosef, hold up. You're getting ahead of yourself. You're getting antsy. You're getting impatient. We're here to get it done. I don't care how hard it is. We're going to get it done. Slow down. Let's do it right. Because you're looking ahead, you get impatient, you get tired. And when you get impatient, there is no energy uh, to pursue uh, the goal. So if you work, you know you're going to be that just work according uh, to that course. So you gather up instructions. You gather up that knowledge of a matter with discipline. So when you hone, you have to discipline yourself because you will miss a lot. So when you're cutting the broccoli, you must discipline yourself. If you don't, you will miss a lot. You will say, it's hot. The bugs are messing with me. I have gotten bitten by a deer fly. I am ready to get out of here. There's nothing to smile about. We allow sin to bite us, our own wickedness. Uh, you understand? So I say, no, let's take our time. Because you're going to miss it all. So how do we replenish ourselves? Well, we utilize water. You drink water. You drink a lot of water. You continue to drink water. And you refresh yourself. And as Yah allows your body to sweat, it cools you down. It makes you feel comfortable. Sure it does, Yisrael. Just as in the natural parallel, there's a spiritual parallel there as well. Here God says, my son, Shirach 618, from your youth up, gather instruction with disciplines. You gather the Musa, the counsel, the instructions of chastisement, chastising, correction. You gather that with discipline. When your wickedness rises up, uh, you subdue that uh, under the wisdom of the counsel that is spoken unto you. You allow yourself to be subdued and brought down. You don't allow your flesh to rise up. You gather this hukma with discipline. You discipline yourself uh, to hear because to the pure all things are pure. Unto those that are defiled and unbelieving they see nothing about themselves. Uh, there is nothing pure. There is nothing right. Nobody can tell them anything. Now, that's a fool. That's a real fool. So you answer fool according to their knowledge. Fool like that you just don't even mess with. I don't mess with fools. I don't like them. I don't like foolish men. They are despicable and a foolish woman is a horrific thing. A silly, clownish, stupid, loquacious woman. There's nothing more rotten than that. I don't take one word back, Yisraya. He did not make the bath of Yisraya to operate in that spirit. He made you to operate in the beauty of the meekness, of the quietness, of the ruach. That's your strength. If that was strength, then the Jezebels out here would not talk the way they talk. So it certainly is not a strength. It shows a lack. It shows immaturity. And it shows a lack of strength. You understand? That's what it shows. Uh, we have not gathered the instructions of Yah from our youth up. That's why we're silly. Well, I know what I said I was going to teach on. I may get to it or not. That's all right, but this is important here, all right? I want you to understand why you think someone like me is austere. He is rigid. He is harsh. He is an unconcerned man. We, you know, it is a sad shame. What I think of our condition as a people... The shape that we're in, and we actually think that we love Yah. We don't give a damn, Yisraya. He said, you garner that soul, and so shall you find 
wisdom till your old age. He says, when you garner, you gather, Sherach 16, 18. He said, when you began to get older, you will find the resources of the Chuchmah of Omar Yahweh. Why? Because you fear the order of Yah. The beginning of wisdom is the Yare, it is the fear, it is the, rever it is the reverence of, uh, of uh, inspiration of Yah. That's what Yare is. Uh, it is an inspiration from Yah. So in your old age, you will have wisdom. You will be wise. You will know how to counsel. Your actions, your attitude will prevail. This is nothing like a silly individual, an immature man or immature woman. It's almost like a child. You tell them, no, I did do it. No, daddy, no, mama. How many children have been honest to say, uh, that's me? That's what children do. They never take responsibility. They never acknowledge their ways, do they? I know I did when my mother, I knew uh, the consequences of my actions. Uh, I did not want to receive uh, the just recompense of my ways. Uh, so I will find other alternatives uh, or the accusations against others. He commands us, come to wisdom, come to her. Like one who plows and sow. That's how you have to come to wisdom. You have to plow you have to plow. Take your foot down. You have to plow. You have to plow. You have to cut deep down in the midst of your own heart and your mind. And then you have to sow the tough seeds. You are sowing seeds, but it's among thorns. It's among hard ground. That's what you're sowing among. And you're not bringing forth any excellence of fruit at all. You're not. So when a man finds wisdom, you come to her like one who plows and sows. Who ones that cuts the field and plows not with a tractor, with a team of oxen. But a man is careful in each row that he plows. Like our forefathers when they were plow the cotton fields here in America. They did not spend one hour in the cotton field. It was one thing that I met this old man when we first moved here. This old man was 80 some years old when I met him 17 years ago. And this old man, he says to me, uh, he looks at me and says, where are you from, boy? Very thin man, but you could just see the very, the, the muscularity and the strength of his body because the old man had worked all his life. And he says something to me. He said, boy, he had some back in his mouth. He said, boy, I could plow 50 acres with a mule. I could take that mule and I could get that there with the mules, boy. And I could plow all that. He said, and I'll tell you. And when you look at my road, they will be three years an hour. I say, talk to me, old man. I say, talk to me. He said, I'm telling you, boy, he said, when you were our plow, you could, at my loaves were not cooking, but our plow, our plow all day long. So what a man plows, he doesn't plow for an hour, but it's a constant turning over. You can plow today and expose those uh, bacteria, I mean, the, 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 the types of bacteria, the types of uh, of. Uh, 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 funguses and things uh, you turn them up today then you go back two days later you turn them up you turn up the same thing uh, again it's a constant turning so when a man begins to utilize the wisdom of God it is a constant plowing that's what instructions of the Muzah the chastising the counsel uh, the instructions of God it constantly plows uh, into our hearts uh, and the reason it must plow into our lair because uh, we saw all kinds of things in the plowed rows uh, that we have already plowed we find every kind of sin every kind of crooked attitude uh, every kind of wicked way every kind of vile disposition do we not find that in ourselves at time uh, come on Yisraya. And all those you are plowed, why? Because you have not sown uh, the Sadiq or the righteous zira, the seed uh, of Ahmadiyah. And the reason we have not sown that, because we have not gathered up uh, the instruction, the Musa of Yah from our youth up. And that's why some that are 35 or like, it would be nice if they were like five year olds. They're not even of that nature. I said to the little bath the other day, I said to her, how are you feeling? She says, I am feeling divine. 
I said, tell me that again. How are you feeling? She said, oh, Papi, I'm feeling divine. I said, yeah, tell me that again. Well, that was her expression, uh, expressing her, the beauty of her emotions. Well, I knew she was feeling something because she was happy. She was smiling. She was inspired. She was jumping up and down. And you could tell when someone is, have a sense of, of an expression. Can you not tell that? Can you not tell when someone is silly or someone is acting nutty? Come on. Do you not know when you're acting nutty and silly? Come on. We try to hide it under false pretense and say, oh, nothing, Romy. Don't lie. Just say I'm nutty. Just say I'm stupid. Just say I'm immature. Then when you begin to talk like that, you begin to find yourself overcoming those circumstances and situations. You lie to yourself, then uh, what do you think? He said, come to her like one who plows and so That's how you come to wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. We need wisdom. It is the principal thing. It is, a, it is, a, it is, it is the beginning of the first grade. But when we began to uh, plow and sow wisdom, then we get understanding of the things uh, that we have sown. We get knowledge. We, get the ability, we, began to, we have the ability to discern. It's sad among Yisra'ya. That even among us, that we can discern the very nature of ourselves beginning here and then one another. And the reason we don't address one another is because that's our own nature. I'm not afraid to address the things among us. I'm not afraid to address, address the things among Israel. What this elder said to me, that's not the only, or those individuals are not the only ones that think that I'm rigid, I'm harsh. I know why they think that. The book tells me why they think that if you show them this, they will get offended. Oh, I'm not that way. You are this way. I will show you why they think I'm that way, which I'm glad they think I'm that way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, come to her like one who plows and sows. And wait for her to have the excellence, the beauty... Of the harvest of wisdom. You have to wait. You have to wait. This is an impatient generation. One thinks because uh, they have presented some kind of impression uh, that it shows that they have tough fruit. It doesn't show a damn thing. We have begun on these trees here last year. The early part of the year, we began to prune. We began to fertilize. And every week we spray them. Uh, make sure the bugs and all of that. Now if you go out there, the, the, the peaches are beautiful. Uh, we went through the orchard. Uh, uh, Shimri uh, uh, and Yosipia. And we went through every tree. And every three inches we pull off a peach. Uh, we drop that to the ground. Uh, to make sure that those that remain. Uh, that they will get the abundance uh, of the nutrients. That we will have lost. Luscious, beautiful, succulent uh, peaches and nectarines and apples uh, when we began to harvest. So we must wait on the harvest uh, of the trees. And when you plow and when you take care of the ground right and you're so right, uh, then there is an expectation of the harvest. You plow in folly, you're going to receive folly. You act like a simpleton, uh, that's what you're going to garner. You act silly and foolish, that's what you're going to garn. That's what you're going to reap. Hallelujah. It says, for in her service will you toil a little while. In the service, in the actions of wisdom, you may toil, you may labor hard for a little while. And soon you will cut up her produce. Soon, Yisrael, if you operate in the Ruach of Yah, Soon, not in your soon time, not in your expectation, you will reap the harvest of what you have sown. If you're a beautiful son of Yah, if you sow that way, you will reap. You sow beautifully unto Yah, you desire wife, He will send you a beautiful wife. You beautiful daughter of Yah, you sowing righteously the wisdom of Yah, he will send you a beautiful husband. But he's not going to send you anything because of your flesh and the drive of your flesh. I have not had an intimacy of a relationship in two years, six months, six years. You've never had one. So you wait on Yah. You wait. You sow according to the wisdom. You plow in your heart uh, and you don't allow anything that is corrupt to be sown there. Yeah. 
I don't care who it is. Hallelujah. This is what he says about wisdom. She, that's what he's talking about, wisdom, isn't it? She is what? Who has Shirach? She is what? No, no. She is what? She is what? Very. Wisdom is very. Wisdom is very harsh. That's what unpleasant is. Wisdom is very harsh. To who? To and unpleasant to who? To the fools. To the unlearned. When those are unlearned men that they think I'm harsh. When you are dumb and silly and stupid, you think that way. When a man speaks in the hukmah, yeah, wisdom is very harsh. And wisdom is very unpleasant. That is what he is talking about here, wisdom. He's talking about she. Talking about the bosom of Yah. She is very harsh. And she is very unpleasant too to the ignorant. To those that are not disciplined. To those that are unlearned. And we all think we are learned it, don't we? And yet when the message just speak, we think he's harsh. We think he's unpleasant. But that's what wisdom is. When a man speaks according to the wisdom of Yah, it is very harsh to you that are unlearned. It, it is very unpleasant to you that are unlearned. It. But you don't learn the way. You have not known the ways of Yah. It's harsh. I don't want that. It's unpleasant. That's not sweet. When he speaks in a way that is seducive and conducive to your flesh, that's sweet. But wisdom is always very harsh, Yisrael. It's very harsh. Yahshua didn't even say that Yah was very harsh. He said that you, know, you knew that I was an austere man. You knew that I was a moratz, a moratz. And if you stu study the word in the Hebraic uh, uh, etymology, moratz is harsh. It is one that is rigid. The wisdom of Yah is very rigid. It doesn't give you room to escape. It doesn't compromise with us. That's what we need today. Men to speak uh, very rigidly. And to speak very harsh. Whereby you find no compromise. To speak very forthrightly. And precisely. Without any compromise. And that's what happened to Gideon. When he, when he began to move away from the things of Yah. They went back to the damn wickedness. I will go ahead. And that's what wisdom is. And these fools today that are unlearned, uh, they don't know Yah. They have not learned the ways of Yah. Yahshua said, you have not learned me. Yes. So they think the truth of Yah is harsh. It is harsh. That's unpleasant. He speaks so unpleasant. Because you are an unlearned fool. You have not learned anything from your youth and Yah. You came into the experience of Yah as a babe. You have not learned one damn thing. And so that's why his wisdom seems so harsh to you. And that's why a messenger would seem as though he is a harsh man. Because he speaks forthrightly. He speaks forcibly. He speaks with the wrath of Yah. He doesn't compromise. And so they would say, well, I just think Pastor Robert, he just, you know, you know, I, I love him. You're a liar. You don't love me. Stop your lies. You don't even love you. You can't love you. How can you love me? You don't know how to love me. You don't know how to love nobody. You don't care about nobody. You're selfish. This is generation. It is me, myself, and I. That's all. Everything that pertains to me, that's what I care about. And you don't even care about that. Hallelujah. I was speaking with my ach the other day. We were in our little office over there. And I said to them, you know, my ach, I never disrespected my mother. Even though she called my Israel one day one of the most filthiest, vile things you could call a woman. And I looked her in her eyes and said, don't you ever in all of your life speak to my wife that way. She's done you no wrong. And don't speak to her like that again. And I mean that. And it was months before I saw her again. Because I will not darken her doors. You're not going to speak to her that way because you're speaking to me. What you call her, you're calling me that. 
And what you call her, it shows your nature, what you were, and what you produce, because that's what I am. Because you call her that. We are Ichat, we are one, in Yeshua HaMashiach. And I said, don't you ever do that. You're wrong, old woman. She's done you no wrong. And for you to uh, speak to her that way, I will not allow you to do that. Not me. She was wrong. I was not disrespectful. And when she would speak to my sister in terms uh, that was just so, they were just so, so debilitating. I would say to her, can I ask you, you call her that, uh, but what did you train her to be? You didn't even teach her how to be a daughter. You haven't even shown her how to love. She does what you have taught her. So if there's anyone that you should be upset with, it should be you, elderly lady. She can only do what you have taught her. You haven't taught her anything. She acts that way because you have taught her to act that way. Oh, that's nasty. It was the truth. And that would be the only thing that would shut her mouth. My mother would get so quiet when I would talk like that. I didn't have to say, you didn't teach her a damn thing. Of course, I didn't talk that way back then. I thought like the rest of the folks. You said the word damn, you're cursing. I'm not going to stop saying it. I want to read that again. Is that all right, my friend Yosef? Hallelujah. It says here, it's talking about she, wisdom. And it, it uses that expression to show the tenderness and the beauty, how wisdom embrace and caress you and love you and show you tender. When you find a woman of wisdom, she knows the beauty of wisdom. Her husband, she is a virtuous woman. She's a woman of strength. That's what the assembly should be. That even your sure by the heathen should be spoken of. That's what her husband man represent. The kingdom, the authority of the Melkut of Yah, the head of the kingdom and her husband is spoken well among the elders and the elders the four and the twenty elders that sit before Yah they will speak well of the beauty of his bride yeah. yet they cringe and, and they are appalled at us Yisraya she wisdom she wisdom is very harsh and unpleasant to the unlearned when you find someone that is unlearned, an unlearned individual, when a man like me speak, when he speaks, they will say that he is harsh. He is forcible. He is morads. His speech is harsh. But that's all right. The old man said, keep preaching the way you do. Can I tell you something? I'm going to preach this way. I don't give a damn how harsh anyone think I am. We have been harsh against Yah. We have entreated Him wrongfully with no regard. We don't even respect Him. And that is the truth, Israel. So the wisdom of Yah, she is very harsh. Not just harsh, but very harsh. And unpleasant to the unlearned ones, those that are ignorant. And they have not learned the ways of Yah. Then wisdom uh, is very unpleasant to them. They don't want to hear that. Uh, I don't like the way he talks. He said that to me. That wasn't nice. I don't like that. That's the way we talk, Israel. Oh, I know he's talking to me. Well, you foolish man, you silly woman, then you ought to be rachia then. To know that he would take time to let you know how silly and foolish you are. That you may change your wicked ways. She is very harsh and unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not even remain with her. Is that capitalized there in your in Shirach? Her? Is it capitalized? Is it capitalized in your book? Okay, so you know it's talking about, it's a, that's a pronoun, isn't it? So it's talking about a specific one, a her. I read that again. She is very harsh and unpleasant. To the unlearned one, the ignorant ones that have no imuna. He that is without bina, without understanding, uh, 
Without the power to discern, those that cannot discern, those that have not the ability to discern, without understanding, will not remain with her. Those that have no understanding of Yah, they will not appreciate wisdom. They will not apply the principles of wisdom to their bosom. They despise wisdom because wisdom is always a correction. It always corrects you, Yisrael. That's why they think one like me is unpleasant. He is not a sweet man. And yet they think that they are sweet and nice. And they speak lies to the people. I want to stop there for a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the book of Mishkali says here in Proverbs 3. I want to move quickly. I'll hold off on the inspiration next time. All right? Zakin Yaramaya will speak next. Uh, it says here in the book of Mishuli, as Yah speaks, as the mind, this mind of Yah in Shulumo speaks of his wisdom, his hukmah. He says, My son, forget not my Torah, but let thy love Shema keep my mitzvah, my commandments. Don't forget the righteousness of Yah. It says, for length of days and long life and shalom shall they add to you. That's what the, that's what the Sadiq of Yah does. That's what the Torah of Yah, that's what the commands of Yah do. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Let not the Hasid and the Torah of Yah forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them on the table of your heart. So you shall find favor and tell understanding in the sight of Yah. And in the sight of man, trust in Yah with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Of course, we don't do that, do we? We lean to the understanding of Yah, don't we? We trust in our own understanding. And that is what wisdom does. It, gets, gives, it grants unto us the, the bina. It grants un, us to us the being. The wisdom to discern, to understand, to be enlightened, to see where you have failed, to see where your infractions against the Yah are, see how you refine yourself, uh, and the, you, you, you stand upright. You can't, in the physical sense, can I ask you a question? There was a saying that when I would attend certain uh, things in Charlotte, I will say the gymnasium. And there was a saying there that if you don't have any pain, no pain, no gain. That's a saying. If there is no pain, there is no gain. In essence, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have uh, the sense of pain when you're pressing something that is 50 pounds or 60, if you don't feel the resistance of that, uh, then you're not gaining. If you do it a few times and you don't feel anything, then it's because, uh, y you know, your muscle has not uh, engaged itself uh, to press against that object. So unless you feel some kind of pain, there is, no, there is no destruction or the tearing down of the muscles uh, that the muscle will refine itself and grow other tissues over it. That's why the muscles get big, that's why they get hard, uh, and that's why they get strong. Uh, because they're broken down uh, and other, uh, the red uh, cells produce uh, the blood to, to cause the arms or the, the body to grow another mass over that. Uh, it is a scar tissue, and that's how muscles uh, are. They're just scar tissues uh, that cover up the scar. So this way of Yah, if there are no pains, you're not gaining anything. Many of the afflictions of the Sadiq. But Yah will deliver them out of them all. Not your little juvenile petty ways. So when a messenger speak, we think that he is harsh and he is austere. He speaks by the commands of Yah to show this wicked generation how wicked they are. There's nothing else to declare because we live in the Truth of Yah, the Torah of Yah, he will, he will prosper us. We must get the house right, Yisrael. <clears throat> that should be our inspiration. The inspiration of the heart of man, uh, that inspiration, it comes from Almighty Yah. You can inspire yourself, and we don't even know what Yah's inspiration is. I'll teach on that, but I want to cover these grounds here. You see, the old man said that because... Uh, those men are not the only ones that think like that. Every now and then you got to touch up on something like this. All right? Hallelujah. Let, let me read a little further here in the book of Mishli. He tells us in all our ways to acknowledge Yah and He shall direct our path. Now who's directing our derach? Who's directing our path? Are we? Is it Yah? 
or is it our emotions, our own uh, desires? We're directing our past. And Yah must be the one if we acknowledge Him. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear Yah and you depart from all of your wickedness. Turn quickly to Mishli, Proverbs 5. He says, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine eye in thine ozen to my understanding. That's what wisdom speaks to us. You must attend unto wisdom. And wisdom is very harsh. It lays it out. Even the young man, that was a simple young man. Uh, the harlot saw him. She sat in the doorway. She saw him. She knew he was silly. She knew he was simple. And she said, come into my bourgeois. And he was overtaken. So wisdom is harsh, Yis uh, Yisraya. It's very harsh. When a man speaks about the wisdom of Yah, it is a harsh uh, re reproach upon the people. It's going to straighten us out. You can think I'm harsh. That's all right. I like that persona. Hallelujah. I want to speak in a way that cuts down into the depths of our bosom and show us the things that we must cleanse out of our hearts and show us the wickedness. For what reason? That you may be, that, that you may regard discretion. See, that's what you need to do. You bow down your ears to wisdom or attend your ears to wisdom and bow down your ears to understand the forward reason. That you may regard discretion. You may know what is the proper thing to do. You may know how to do it. And that your lips may keep knowledge. Your lips may guard the speech of Yah. For the lips of a strange woman's drop as honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, wood, sharp as a two-edged sword. He says, uh, this religious spirit, and we all carry this religious spirit of harlotry. That's what we all carry. It has been birthed in us all. We are self-righteous. We are right. We think we have understanding. And that thing is like a two-edged sword. It's a, it will bring a bitter end, Yisrael. It is like wormwood. And wormwood is a bitter death. And it brings a bitter death in everything. That's why many relationships never work. That's why relationships don't. Very few today. You find yourself in a relationship where it works. You better berach, yeah. Hallelujah. Because very few are working today. Very few. Because you find the women without wisdom of her beauty and her place and they are stupid as hell and that is not a denigration to the bath of Tizayon if you are that way you are stupid as hell you find the cowardly immature men that have no strength to abide in the wisdom of a Torah of Almighty Yah and they are seduced by the sweet droppings of her dirty stinking breath And she said, come in and sit with me. Get away from me, woman. This silly thing. But her end is as a bitter wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, and her steps take hold to hell. Now that's what it does. Have you ever heard a man say, man, I've gone through hell with that woman? He means what he's saying. That's where she takes you down to the depths of Sheol, down to hell and that is what this religious spirit has done to us it brings death we have no love for Torah and so what a wise man speaks to us and tell us we're ignorant as hell we're not walking in the truth we think he's harsh and wisdom is very harsh how many of us as little ones did not think that our parents were harsh we said can I go here and she said no and then we began to play and beg, and they will look at us and say, I told you, boy, don't ask me again. And you knew better to ask again. Yet we thought they were harsh, did we not? And those that said to their sons and daughters, do what you want to. You tell me their fruit of uh, beauty in them today? They disregard them? They don't give a damn about them. They talk to them any kind of way. They don't care who they do it in front of. They don't give a damn. 
It is better to be a daughter, a son of Yisrael without a wife and children than to have those that are nothing but of a bastard slit. It may seem harsh, but it's right. It may be unpleasant, and, it, and the Torah, the wisdom of Yah, it is like a bitter thing, but when you allow it to enter into our, into our Bethim, our Bethim, our Bethim, which is our belly, which is the center of our expression and our emotion, then it will yield forth the fruit of Yah, it will become sweet unto us. Sure will. It's bitter going down, then it gets sweeter. You began to understand and recognize it is Yah, and the knowledge began to become fruitful, Yisrael. He said, Our feet go down to hell, lest you shall ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that you cannot even know them. Now, that's the way of holotry and the way that is superficial and full of pretense. They are movable, they're not firm. Yah says, he says, now one jolts or tittle shall pass from the Torah that he has established. The heaven and the earth will pass away, but not one jolt or tittle shall pass from the Torah. But the ways of this spirit of holotry, it is movable. It changes, it alters itself to seduce and to draw one into the bosom. So wisdom, she's very harsh. Wisdom is very unpleasant. That's what it is. So when a man speaks with the wisdom of Yah, he's going to seem harsh. He's going to seem unpleasant. He's not going to satisfy uh, your, your, your purpose and your intent. Let me read something else quickly in Mishli, Proverbs chapter 9. I like this in chapter 9. It says, wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out seven pillars. We know what the seven pillars are. They're the seven Ruachim, the seven spirits of Yah. That's what, when one has the wisdom of Yah, you can tell when one has the Ruach Chodash. You can tell when one has the wisdom of, the, the Ruach of understanding. You can tell when one has the Ruach of the fear of Yah. Come on, daughters of Tizan, I want you all to hear me. Everyone, every man, listen. When a woman has the Ruach of uh, uh, Yare, the fear, the inspiration of the fear, of the reverence of Yah, she's not going to disregard uh, the head. I don't give a damn who it is. The woman, she must be subject unto... You're not going to disregard that. When you don't have the fear of God, you disregard that. She has hewn out a wise, one that is wise, the wisdom of Yah, when hewn out the seven pillars, the seven strengths of Yah, and the other seven rachim. They're the perfect law, the perfect order of the Torah of Yah in our bosom. The Ruach of understanding, the Ruach of knowledge, the Ruach of wisdom, the Ruach of the fear of Yah, the Ruach HaKodash. So what has hewn out that? That's what wisdom does. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn, she has cut out her seven perfect pillars. So when one has wisdom, they know that they are filled with the Ruach of Yah. They know they have the wisdom of understanding, the Ruach of understanding. They know they have the Ruach of fear. They don't just speak so suddenly. They don't. When a fool even holds his or her tongue, they are even perceived as one that is wise. When you find one that has an answer for everything and a reason, you're dealing with a damn fool. I talked to this old man yesterday. I let him, he did 95% of the talking. Until I said, I I'm coming to see you, old man. But he did all the talking. Elahu, he did not speak unto the latter end with Eob and those masterful men of the Torah. This is a stupid generation. It doesn't allow wisdom to hew out the perfect order of Yah in their bosom. She has killed her beast. She has brought the perfect offering. That She has killed the beast. She has mingled her Yah Yen, her wine. She has also furnished the table of Yah. She has sent forth her, her maidens. She cries upon the highest places in the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she says to him, Come eat my bread and drink the wine which I have mingled. 
And she tells you, forsake the foolishness and live and go by the way or the derrick of understanding. He that reproves a scorner gets to himself shame. And he that rebukes a wicked man gets to himself a blot. Don't even instruct a scorner, Lisa. He hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in his learning. The fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Kodash is understanding. So when you correct a wise man or a wise daughter, they will love you. They will be strengthened. This generation, you correct them. You know the first thing they do? You know what they do? You all know what they do. You don't have to answer. You all know that I do things rhetorically. I will answer it. I just want you to ponder it for a moment. You know what they will do? They will always turn against you. You will find them going another way. I've watched people say they love me, and all of a sudden I tell them something, and then they find someone else to love. I'm glad your love is not what loves me. It's amazing because the old man says that to me in precious Achot. She sent $100 offering the other day. And in her letter, she says to me, Reak, please don't stop preaching the way you preach. Keep it that way. Tell me. I preach on Shabbat. There was a sister, today she sent $200. She says to me, I am lost for words. I can't even speak, I'm speechless. Because it was truth that refined me. This is a stupid generation that thinks that this not me. And it is you. It is. You can tell a beautiful fruit tree, can't you? Sure you can. So you tell a beautiful daughter, I said to Ach, Zimion today, I saw one of the branches broke down, beautiful peaches on it. Just beautiful. I said, oh man, peaches are getting red. They're beautiful. Wow. They're so beautiful. So you could tell the peaches were, would be succulent and beautiful. So you could tell a beautiful woman. She never makes herself ashamed. She never makes anyone ashamed. That's what wisdom doesn't make. Yeah, it doesn't shame. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Yisraya. It doesn't bring no shame upon him. Nothing like one that brings shame upon Yah. So he gives us the beauty of the daughter to Zion to show us and to show her. You never bring shame upon your head. I, I'm not going to let you do that to me. And that's just me. I'm not going to let you do that to me. Hallelujah. I want to go back to Shirach. I'm going to close in a moment, all right? This is what wisdom is like in Shirach 621. Let me read verse 20 again. It says that wisdom is very harsh and unpleasant to the unlearned. So if you're unlearned, that's, you don't know Yah, you think I'm harsh and unpleasant. That's why those 10 servants, that's why Yisra, Yah, they think that Yah is harsh. They think he's unpleasant. That's why we're not taking the talent. There's only one talent he's given us. And that's the gift of Yeshua HaMashiach. And he's coming for an abundance of fruit among his people. You can take it lightly all you want. If anything that is beautiful, anything that is of strength to you, you want to share that with someone. If a man has a beautiful marriage, he wants to share that with the young man. Uh, he wants to teach them. If you're a beautiful woman, uh, you want to teach the other young women the beauty of a woman. Uh, if you're not a beautiful woman, you don't give a damn. Uh, you're not going to teach anybody anything. Uh, if you're a beautiful man, you want to teach the beautiful young man. Uh, the beauty of being a beautiful man. Just like Daewee that said, uh, he was ruddy, he was tifera, he was beautiful. You're a beautiful wife. Hell, you want to share that. Uh, and if you're not a damn beautiful wife, you don't want to share that with no one. You want to hide it. So you don't want to mess with nothing. You leave it alone. You want silly people around you as silly as you are. 
You want men that are as foolish as you are around you, as foolish as you are. You want those that are superficial just like you because uh, you're not talking about anything that is genuine. You're not talking about anything that is sustenance because uh, you are not, uh, your, your mind is not formed by the wisdom of Yah. It's formed by your folly. So if you got something that is of that value, you want to share with everyone. When someone got a big fat house, uh, they want you to see the house. Look at my house. Uh, and those that are close to them, uh, they want them to see the beauty of their home. I never forget when we first moved here. Very wealthy man down the street here. His name was Carl. And he was wealthy. He told me, he said to me, preacher, I made a half a million dollars in six months off emu. He said, my first two, I paid $60,000 for a pair of them, but I made money. You understand? And so one day he drives up the road. He sees the beehives. He comes and we began to talk. I talked with him and he said, come visit me. So I went down to his home, my Isha and I. He said, it took five years to build this house. And it was on that river down there. And you're talking about a house? My. He said, come in. You all come into my home. So when I went into the man's home, I took my shoes off. White carpet. It was just a spectacular house. You were in the kitchen. You didn't even know where the cabinets the design, the spectacular beauty of the house. Uh, and every three stories, uh, you look at the river. He had a deck almost. The deck, my stone deck. I said, I take off my sheet. He said, oh, no. He said, preacher, don't do that. Don't do that. I said, I tell you what. The next time you come to my house, it's 16 feet by 32. I said, I'll take you for a tour, all right? How about that? Next time you come, I'll show you my splendid, beautiful place. So he had a beautiful place, but when one has something that is beautiful, you want to share it. You got something that is beautiful. You got a beautiful disposition, daughters of Tizayan. Others will see it. And there's one thing about a man. He, he may act stupid, but he can discern things. You understand? He knows what is genuine and what's real, okay? And most men is not going to mess with that which is not real. I don't care what you think. I don't care how you try to promote yourself. He's not going to do that. He's looking for something. Look, men are not looking for sex today. They can get it all day long. They're looking for something that is beyond sexual. It is, my Eva. It is something that is greater than that. Now, you may be burning in your flesh, but a man, he's looking for something that's greater than that. He's looking for something that's much more intimate. He's looking for something that is deeper than that. Because he can find that all day long. Hallelujah. He can. Hallelujah. It tells us here in verse 21... She is like a burdensome stone of trial to him, and he will not delay in casting her aside. That's what wisdom is like. It is almost like this heavy yoke, this stone where you began. The more you know, the more is required of you. But you cannot cast her aside. Although it seems as though that, who, who wants to be spoken of that way? Who wants to be disliked? I don't want to be disliked. But I know that's, that's part, of my, part of my niche in ya. I know that. I, I don't care how people even call me when I talk to them. Uh, they always, when I straighten them out and I show them uh, this is wrong, uh, they always got something that is smart to say. I say, what do you call me? I have one man to call me. Well, well, you don't have no love. And I love the way you preach. I love you. I say, man, go ahead. Go find someone else. I don't have time for that. And that's what wisdom is like. She's like a burdens and stone. Verse 22. For the discipline of wisdom is according to her name. She hooks you. According to her name. And it's not manifest to many. So you must understand wisdom is not manifested to many. Many don't have the wisdom of Yisra'ya. Many sons of Yisra'ya, many daughters, they, they don't have the wisdom. That's why I always tell the women to read uh, Mishli 31. They need to study that and learn every line, every precept of it. Many are not wise at all. Listen, my son. Isn't that what Shaul said? Shalomo? Listen, my son. He says it here. Hallelujah. Sure he says it. 
the proverb of Shalomo, it says, uh, to my son, my son, if thou will receive my words. He tells you to listen, Yisraya. Listen, my son. He says in Mishli 5, my son, attend unto my wisdom. Hear my wisdom. Hear my instruction. He says uh, in Mishli uh, 4.1, hear you children the instructions of a father and attend to knowledge. Give yourself over to knowledge. He says, listen, my son, and take, take and receive my advice and refuse not my Musa. Refuse not the counsel. Refuse not the correction. The chastisement of Yah, his instruction. Don't refuse that, Yisrael. Put your feet in her fetters. Let wisdom bind you. Let it be a shackle on your feet. Put your feet in her, in, in her fetters and your neck in her chain. Put your shoulders under her and carry her. And be not grieved nor fret with her bonds. Don't be grieved with wisdom. Don't allow wisdom uh, uh, to cause you to be discouraged, Israel, because she is of great strength and she builds a great house. That was a scripture I was looking for. That's all right. Hallelujah. Let me finish this. Hallelujah. This is just at lib. I looked at this two minutes before I came. That's the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He commands us here in verse 26, come to her with your whole heart and keep her ways with all your power and your might. <clears throat> Search and see. She shall be made known to you. And when you get hold of her, do not let wisdom go. When you get understanding, don't let wisdom go, Yisraya. For at last you will find, for at last you will find her rest. She gives. That's what wisdom gives us. And she will, she will be changed into joy for you. Then shall her fetters be a strong defense to you and her change a majestic robe of honor. Her yoke is a golden ornament. And her bonds are cords of blue. You will wear her like a majestic robe of honor. And put her on like a crown of gladness, gladness of Shimcha. My son, if you be willing, you shall be taught. You must be willing to be taught. If you be willing, you will be taught. If you want to be taught... Daughters want to be taught how to be wise. Young men want to be taught how to be husbands and men. You will be taught. Wisdom will teach us. He will have the renowned men, men that are wise, to teach us. They can teach us their failures, their mistakes, and all of that. And their failures and their mistakes are for your knowledge. Their failures is a plethora of wisdom. You don't discount that. Some people with their grandizing uh, concept of themselves. Uh, I haven't done what you've done. Hell, you've done worse than what he's done. So their failures uh, and their own demise uh, is a rich blessing to you. It teaches you. Uh, it instructs you. Uh, come on, woman. Uh, she teaches you and shows you. I don't care... How you feel, Ahot, you feel like you're not up to par to counsel this woman when she's stubborn, you still tell her. Stop that damn madness and wickedness. He says here, my son, if you're willing, you shall be taught. And if you will apply your mind, you shall be wise, you shall be prudent. You shall understand wisdom. You shall understand its principles uh, and how to apply it. Uh, if you love to listen to hear. Now, no one loves to listen to hear, do they? That's where he gets you, doesn't he? Wisdom is so beautiful. If you love to listen. We don't love to listen, do we? We love to talk. We love to talk. We like to show. And you're wrong. You're wrong. If we love to listen, and we just love to shema, to hear. 
you shall receive understanding. That's why we don't have understanding and knowledge. And if you incline your ear, you then will become wise. Shalomo says here in my closing, Mishli 12, Whosoever loves Musa, Proverbs 12, 1, Whosoever loves, do we love Musa? How many of you love, don't raise your hand now. And when you define the word instruction, it is enunciated, I know, not arrogantly, but I study the book, I, I'm a word man. It is Musa, Musa, it is to correct, it is to chastise, it is to discipline, and it is to instruct. That's what, when Yah says, whosoever love to be disciplined, who loves to be chastised? Who loves to be chastened? We don't even want Yah to chasten us. Whosoever loves instruction, loves da'at, loves knowledge. The ability to discern, to know when they are wrong, when they can see their corrupt, wicked ways and their ways uh, that are not uh, attributed to a knowledge of Torah and truth. But he that hates reproof is a pig. When you find someone that don't like to be instructed or corrected, that's a dirty, brutish pig. I don't give a damn who it is. That's a brute. Daughters, you don't want to be a brute. Says brutish, that's a heathen. It's brutish. A tough man attains favor of Yah, but a man of wicked device will be condemned. So when a man loves to hear, if we will give ourselves to hearing, then we will become wise. And we will become wise. When you speak to one today, the first thing you want to do is talk. Isn't that so? You know they're not wise. That's why you must reprove. And instruct. So who are those that believe that Yah is harsh? If you show them the ways of Yah, they will say he's harsh. That's why you hear people say all the time, they say it this way now. Quote, God is love, unquote. He didn't come to condemn the world. I know he didn't. Because this damn world was condemned already. He didn't have to condemn it. It was condemned already. That ain't love. They always tell you that ain't love. Will they not? I hear people. Oh, I hear people. That people call me and tell me, I thought you had some love. I said, you don't know what love is, man. Go to hell. You know what I, when I say go to hell, I mean to hell with that. I will shut my ears from what you are saying. It is of no value. It is of no purpose. It has no strength at all. I will not hear it. That's why I say that, Yisraya. That's why. So who is harsh? Is Yah harsh? He is forcible. He commands. He sada. He doesn't ask us. He commands us. He sada. He commands. And he commands us to do. When he says, Thou shalt not commit murder, is he asking us or commanding us? He commands us to remember Hashirach. So wisdom is very harsh and is very unpleasant to those that are unlearned it. When you're speaking to a fool, what you say will not be pleasant. It will not be pleasant to them. It's hard. It's harsh. And it's very unpleasant. Anytime you speak to a fool, you will know that they have no wisdom of Yah. They are evil. And that's what they think is harsh, unpleasant. So they will find one that will compromise in their sin. And that's what they always do. It's one thing that I've learned here. I've seen people come and go. When people come around, I watch them. And when someone will instruct them, tell them they're wrong, instruct them, they will always remove themselves from that one and find someone else that will not confront their wickedness. You see, you can't. We've seen every kind of person that come through here. So you're not new. I don't care who. I don't care if it's this sister or anyone. Hell, she ain't bringing nothing here. But she ain't getting by. I'm just sad I'm using her. She ain't getting by. She may get by with you, but she doesn't get by with me. Ain't nothing because I've seen her. Same, same spirit, same attitude, same self-righteousness, just like in you. Hallelujah. You can't get by. I'm glad you can't. Hallelujah. You would not want someone guarding this house where you can get by him, could you? Hallelujah. I'll tell you the truth. Hallelujah. I don't care if you get uncomfortable with me. 
It makes no difference at all. If you do that, because just like I said, just like I preach, you don't even, you don't even like instruction. You don't want to tell you nothing. See, hallelujah. So you're not getting by. I've seen the false pretense. I've seen the superficial attitudes. I know a real woman when I see one. I like and love the be beautiful daughters of Tizayon. I hate phony ones, but I love beautiful daughters. I love beautiful daughters. Always have. Regard them greatly. But no pretense. Let's be real. Hallelujah. May Yah barak you all. You have joined us for the live broadcast. This is just eat the bread tonight. Hallelujah. You have something to eat the lechum. That's all right. Maybe it wasn't sweet bread, but it was bread enough. May Yah barak you all be encouraged. Yah barak you my my zakhain shemri. May he strengthen you. Hallelujah. Yah barak you. Let us stand to our feet. Be encouraged, Yisraya. Hallelujah. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim in all things. We do barak you this day, Yah, for your blessings, your kindness. Hallelujah. Cause your servants to speak, Yah, and an austere fashion. And those that are unlearned, if they desire wisdom, they will learn. If any man like wisdom, let him ask of Yah, as Yaakob says, who gives liberally and unbraideth, do not rip the man to pieces because he liked wisdom. Bless your people, guide us. Teach us and show us what is needed in this hour that we may fulfill all your commands in your surest mighty name. We barak you for this day, for this gathering. Restore the bodies of your people. Give them physical strength above all, the strength of your ruach. We ask it all. I pray in your surest name. Hallelujah. 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 Ya barak. Shalom.